What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again for another Tottenham update. And it's not an update which any of us are looking forward to giving. It's the update we were dreading, the thing that we least wanted to see this summer, and the thing that seemed obviously inevitable over the last 48 hours or so, and that is that Harry Kane has officially joined Bayern Munich from Tottenham Hotspur for a fee. Well, there's a fee which is basically... Um, at the moment, subject to what reporter you uh, believe. Some are saying, Ali Gold saying £100 million plus £20 million add-ons. Um, some others are saying €100 million Euros plus €20 million Euros in add-ons. So I guess choose your reporter, who, uh, who else you want to believe. But the fact of the matter is, Kane is a Bayern Munich player. Um, I'm joined here by Brian Daigle from Tottenham on Tour to discuss this move. First of all, let's just see how things developed over the day. So... This is what Bayern Munich posted to announce their signing of Harry Kane. Oh, this is not... I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. You've done well to avoid it, but here it is. And action. Oh, God. Piss off. I feel sick. Um, and before I bring on, I'll bring on something else as well. One second. There is a, um, oh, apologies. Kane himself uh, did a, a goodbye message to Spurs and the Spurs fans. So I guess we'll um, give that a little watch through before we get into it. It's a couple of minutes long, but one second. And we'll get that with you in a sec. Oh, this is also not great, but... Hi, everyone. Um, I won't Have you seen this, Brian? Yeah, I saw this this morning. Tottenham fans that I'll be leaving the club today. Um, obviously, a lot of emotions going through me right now. And sad to be leaving a club I've spent nearly 20 years of my life at. Uh, from an 11-year-old boy. Doesn't look completely happy, does he? A 30-year-old man now. No, no. Great moment but and you know what, memory. this video, you must have been so yeah, emotional yeah, before doing this. So, this is a thank you to uh, all my teammates. It would have been nice uh, if they would have done this kind of thing uh, just after the Shakhtar game with him and a microphone and just made it a lot easier for the fans uh, to digest. This, like, on the club, phone in Germany, uh, like, man, two minutes, I like, get it, like, finish uh, it. Is, is there. Uh, well, 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 let me look at it. When he broke the record, they were quick to give him the mic then, weren't they? That's the true. They gave it after the game, world. didn't they? Yep. Uh, and I've given everything that I possibly could to, to make you proud um, and give you as many special moments as, and memories uh, to hopefully last forever. So um, I felt like this was the time to leave. Uh, I didn't want to go into the season with a lot of uh, unresolved future talk. Um, you know, I think it's important for the new manager and the players to concentrate on trying to get Tottenham back to, this is hard, to around the top of the table. Is, and I can't believe it's actually happening. I just so, it's hard um, to imagine a Kane at Tottenham without Harry Kane, and that's the reality now. It is. It's so it is long. Long. That's the thing. You just and, never thought this day would come, do you? Did you? You just did not yeah, think message, though, to all you fans we'd see this video. The world, every single Tottenham fan that supported me and been with me throughout my journey. Um, me and my family will cherish it forever. We'll never forget all the moments we've had together. Um, so thank you. Uh, I'll be watching this season. Uh, good luck to Tottenham. Good luck to uh, the whole club. Um, so, yeah, it's not a goodbye because you never know how things pan out in the future. But uh, it's a thank you and I'll see you soon. That was quite interesting. You know, he didn't have to. He did, uh, one sec. He didn't uh, have to. I feel like he didn't have to say that. Like he, he didn't. Him, but he. One thing you will notice is he said thank you to everyone except the board. Didn't like, say thank you to Daniel ev Levy. Every, he, he said every, every, every everyone but all the members of the stock. It's just like you said. It's a, a very very sad day that we dreaded would happen. Let me has. just read through uh, the statement from Daniel Levy. Um, regarding the sale of Harry Kane. I've just got it up here. Um, 
Chairman Dynasty says, we sought over a long period of time to engage Harry and his representatives in several forms of contract extensions, both short and long term. Harry was clear, however, that he wanted a fresh challenge. I will not be signing a contract this summer. We have reluctantly, therefore, agreed to his transfer. We have seen an academy product become one of the best ever players to put on a Spurs shirt and become one of the world's elite strikers. It has been a truly remarkable journey. Harry's achievements and records say everything about the player. And throughout his 19 years at the club, Harry has been a model professional on and off the pitch and an inspiration for young players who dream of following in his footsteps. I should like to thank Harry for everything he's done for us, all the memories and all the records. We wish him and, and his family all the best for the future. It goes out saying he's always welcome back. He's a much-loved and valued member of the, the Spurs family forever in our history. And, yeah, that look, uh, I, I, I'm... In terms of Le- like him putting in there, they tried to offer him a contract and he made it clear. But like, we all know why he he made it clear he's not going to stay. It's because we've bungled the, his last four years of his career, and that's yep. the reality. It's not a case of, you know, we we, we Spurs are just blameless in this. Like, he's never going to sign a contract when we've been finishing sixth, seventh, and eighth in three of the last four years. You know, at the end of the day, de- at some point, the board have got to acknowledge when you start finishing mid-table so consistently, it's no longer just a bad spell. That's what you've become. You've become a mid-table club and you have to do the work to change that around. And I think Ange is probably a step in the right direction, but unfortunately when it comes to keeping Kane, it's just too little too late. It, it, it is him as well. And what you've got to look at as well is when he said we spent a long time trying to get him to the table and sign a new contract, if it was clear he wasn't going to sign it, why didn't you start looking for his successor? Don't tell me this 19-year-old Valise is the successor straight away. He's not the immediate replacement. Um, the fact that he, even in departing, couldn't leave out a little jab at your record goal scorer, the guy that's achieved so much under the owner. Oh, honestly. Uh, this is this is this is what we're going to have to uh, 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 look. This is it. Kane, start getting used to it because this is Kane in a Bayern shirt, and that's what it looks like. Him in red as well. The fact they play red, just at least in, if he went to Madrid, they play white. I would love to see him yeah. back in a white shirt, but like Bayern, I have to see him in bloody red. Ugh, makes me. Sick. I mean, the only thing I can say is right now, every single Spurs fan, fingers crossed, Bayern Munich get Arsenal in the Champions League because if you take Bayern Munich's record against them. And Harry Kane's record against them, that could be golden. But but it's it's just just seeing it. Look, the, the twenty twenty seven. Then listen, I I don't the hold any Oh, he's already already ingratiating himself to it. Look, you can't look. Look, he's made the move. They've decided he's, he's got to be fully in on it. This is a bit of behind the scenes stuff from the day. Apparently, of him signing for Bayern Munich. It's very hard to watch for a Tottenham fan, but. Yeah. It's something we have to get through. It's going to be a, it's a very difficult day. Our best ever player and best ever striker leaving to go to Germany. But we've only got but Tottenham as a football club, unfortunately, they only have themselves to blame. These images, what they should be doing is burning a hole in 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 their heart and essentially they should be using this as kind of like motivation to improve themselves in a way like they, they can't be let that it's come to this point that you're seeing Harry Kane you know lining up in a Bayern Munich shirt that should uh really be a telling point for Daniel Levy and the hierarchy yeah. is where we've cut where we've got to we've got to this stage where this where this is the reality I bet I think because you know Kane has made it Kane signed a six-year contract at 2018 in 2018 at 25 years of old age you know, there's a reason why he was prepared to sign such a long contract and commit his peak years to Tottenham. He really believed we were building something. He really believed that Tottenham could be a place. He was happy at Tottenham. He was happy in London, happy in the Premier League. I think he really believed that Spurs um, could be a, could be the long term part of his career. I think he could he could have been here for the rest of his career. Yeah. The the reality is since since signing that contract. He scored 140 goals in 220 games and Spurs went on to finish 6th, 7th and 8th in the league. And at the end of the day, when when you're banging those kind of numbers and putting in consistent performances like that and you're constantly being let down by everything around you and you're constantly 
buying into different managers. And he you know he loved Jose. He loved Conte. Uh, he yep. loved maybe Nuno. He, uh, he he loved all the managers that we appointed. He bought into them. But the club always half asked all the projects that all the all the projects we started never fully committed to any of them. And it led to a situation where all the projects will be ended up being short term and end up failing quite spectacularly each time. And so Andrew's come in and he's like, and, and as much as he would, I'm sure he would love to sit down and give Kane the whole spiel. And he said it himself, Ange, like he, he didn't see the point in coming, sitting down and trying to convince him to stay because Kane would have heard this a hundred times from a hundred, dozens of times from loads of different managers, essentially. And yep. There's not more Ange can say. There's almost like it's just too little, too late. There's not much Ange can say at this point to convince Kane that he could have, he could still have a future here because the damage has already been done. So, I mean, it's kind of boy who cried wolf syndrome, isn't it? He's heard it. So he's heard it so many times, like you said. Uh, and the thing is, Harry Kane has openly said it with his own words: "Match my ambitions. I don't leave this club." And unfortunately, we haven't matched his ambitions, and it's another player that has left right before the start of the season. Another elite player, and not just any elite player, the England captain would have been our captain this season going forward. Um, a youth product, our greatest ever goal scorer. We know all the records that he smashed along the way. Most calendar go uh, goals in a calendar year, most hat-tricks in a season, blah -de -blah -de -blah. most goals and assists in the same season. Every single record he's broken. And we've let this just slip through our fingertips. We've just yeah, the, let it go. The reality is, reality is someone like Harry Kane, they don't come along, you know, in, even more than once in like a generation. They're, they're, he's a lottery ticket, Harry Kane. He is a one in a million. And if someone like Kane, if you can drive, like, I think Kane is like a, pl a player who's going to, I think he, even in his Tottenham career, he's probably taken a lot more shit than maybe a lot of other players would have put up with, essentially. You know, you've seen yeah. you've seen at other clubs one season out of the Champions League and bam, they're, they're the player's looking to leave. He wants out immediately. He's had enough. Like Kane is part with years and years of this shit. And he's yep. still kind of like been willing to give the club every opportunity to turn things around. Like that kind of mentality doesn't come around too often. That kind of mindset and loyalty is not common in this day and age. It's It's really rare. And we actually found that. And that's what makes this situation even more uh, even more painful because if we can bring someone like that with that mentality and that kind of personality like Kane to the brink of just losing faith and disillusionment within the club, what faith does anyone else have? And I know things are changing. I'm not trying to be too negative because I, I do... I am positive about Ange, and I am positive about the, the, what the future can bring. But, I'm, but I think we have a right to be pissed off and angry about letting this situation get to the stage where a player like Kane gets so disillusioned with the club that he feels like he has to join the Bundesliga and Bayern Munich to, to achieve his goals rather than um, stay at a club that he loves. Well, I mean, Simon, if you look at it, um, once we knew this deal was going ahead and once, obviously, he flew out there, you would have seen it on social media, you would have seen it in your chats when you've gone live. The, 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 the heat is on now. With Levy and a lot of people, this was their final straw. It's it, it's on, and um, it's come at a point where, obviously, like you said, we, we had the lottery ticket. We had the lottery ticket. We've had a couple of times where we had a team with Harry Kane that was on the verge of greatness, that was on the verge of getting the job done. But instead of pushing forward and going that little bit harder, we, we played it safe. We played it safe, or we didn't buy at all. And you just you can't win in football that way. You need to be smart. You need to take risks, calculated risks, which we don't. Um, you need to have plans. There's no planning. There's no planning. I mean, when have we planned anything? Every single time the change in manager, every single time it's a new philosophy, every single time we got, it, it's so scattergun. And like you said, we had Harry Kane. A man that scored his first goal in, uh, I believe, it was in Ireland in a Europa League game has gone on to score so many incredible goals, some incredible moments, some of the happiest times of us as Spurs fans, like of our generation. We'll start with Harry Kane scored this goal, and now he's no more at Tottenham. 
this is our record goal scorer. And, and, and as you know, with Jimmy Greaves, record, records are hard to break, especially now with Harry Kane at 280 goals. We'll be lucky if we see that broken in our lifetime. 100%. And yeah, and people say, like I heard people say the argument, oh, look, at the end of the day, players in this current day and age, they don't stay um, for the, you know, the fact we've had 10 years of him, we should be happy with that. And, um, you know, players in this day and age, they don't usually stay for a club for that long. And the fact that we've had a 30 goal, 25 goal a season striker for so long is is something that um, you can't expect to uh, to, you know, have that forever. And you should, you know, at the end of the day, he's been there for 10 years and that's very rare in this game. But at the end, of, in my opinion, I think Kane would have stayed if we just didn't have such an almighty fall off. If we if we weren't so consistently, like, you know, Spurs should have, the alarm bell should have been ringing with one mid-table finish. But to have, you know, cons- to consistently finish mid-table, yeah. you know, for nearly half a decade, um, essentially, that... That's unacceptable for a player of Kane's quality, and he's he's held up his standards. He's held up his end of the bargain. The club haven't held up theirs, essentially, since he signed his deal. So, this is the situation that we're in. Uh, do you reckon he might be back one day? He he said it's never a goodbye. I don't think he would have said that if he didn't mean it. Um, so, do you reckon there's a chance in a, in a few years down the road, once he's won of some trophies at Bayern Munich, you know, he still mm-hmm. feels like I've got some years left. Let's break that. Let's break that Premier League record. You you would think and hope if he was to ever come back to England, there would be only one destination for him. Um, I think there's a lot of bad blood behind the scenes between him and the boy. I, I I don't know. I mean, Kane's heart would always be in Tottenham. He loves the Spurs fan. He loves the club. But I think there's a lot of damage done in that relationship. Um, I I don't know. You let's put it this way: if I could have a dream in a couple of years. He's won the Champions League or done whatever he's got to do. He wants to come home. There's only one destination that he'll say. He'll go, like Gareth Bale did. Um, you would hope. But we shall have to wait and see. We shall have to wait and see. I would hope and pray. I'd love nothing more than to see him do a Sheringham, a Bow, a Klinsman. Um, well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? What about you? Well, I think, I think he might come back. I think he will come back, actually. I really do. I think he will come back one day. I think we Spurs fans love a return. I think the board have done it a few times with, with Sheringham and Bell, as you say. And I think, in my opinion, in three years' time, he's still going to be one of the best strikers in Europe, I reckon. So, um, and I think he, I think he, at the back of his mind, I don't think he'll, I think he knows 47 goals is really not a long, not a long way to go to complete that record. No. And he's going to want to do that. He's not going to want to let that sit. I guess at the end of the day, if it's a choice between letting that sit and winning trophies, he's chosen winning trophies. But I think he can have both. I don't think he has to be a choice. Um, but the but there is a chance that he he you know he goes to Bayern and he's so happy there that maybe he does just end his career at Bayern and 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 that is a possibility as well. And that's something that he, he's going to have to decide. Yeah, do you, do you see me listen? I, but when people talk about this, and they go they've gone to a lesser league. It may be a lesser league. It may not be as. Uh, hard as the Premiership. It may not be as ferocious or as watched, but Harry Kane has wanted to win trophies. He's got all the personal accolades. Golden boot at the World Cup. Golden boot in the Premier League. England record goals. He's got all the personal accolades. When you look back at his career and he's about to have his fourth child and we all hear when you have your grandkids and yada, 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 he wants to say, look what I've done, look what I achieved. Does he want to show the Audi Cup, the Water Toll Cup and the Tiger Cup? Or does he want to show a Champions League, a Bundesliga, maybe a German Cup? If he wins the I mean, he could win a trophy today. <laughs> he could actually win a trophy today. I know it's like... That the is the most thing. Be, and I can see the headlines already. 11 years at Tottenham, zero trophies, 11 hours at Bayern, one trophy. And I can well, see Gary, Gary Lineker has already goes. tweeted that. Gary Lineker, the ex-Spurs player. Oh, there player. you go. Um... Uh, you saw Alan Shearer when Alan Shearer put up the thing, time to go, Harry, and he put a picture of him on the pilot. It's all going to make you, you know. If I was written. buying, if I'm buying, I'm chucking him straight away, get him, make him break that trophy duck on the first day of Bayern Munich. And what, a, yep. uh, that, that of like a PR standpoint in terms of the move and everything, there wouldn't, there couldn't be a better start than just getting him ending his trophy duck within one, well, you, within you, the first 24 hours of joining Bayern Munich. And Simeon, you know the British press. 
You look at the papers today, every single back, back page is Harry Kane leaving. Tomorrow, or if he does it today, tomorrow's back pages will be Harry Kane holding the trophy. And it will just ignite. And it's, be, it's the most spursy thing as, ever, isn't it? 11 years yeah. of Kane can, can win a trophy and he, t- he has one day at Bayern and he does. But it's also the most spursy thing that we go and win a trophy in the first year that he doesn't stay with us. Yeah, true. So it, could, it could work both ways, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But like I said, listen, for me, obviously people know my love for Paul Gascoigne. When he left, I was in bits. I was younger. I was. We, we've seen the greats come and go. Yes, the club moves on. The club moves on and always will do. The, the, the crest on the front is bigger than the name on the back. But this is the biggest, heaviest, worst, situation that we could have dreamt of any player but this man we do move on clubs do move on but historically whenever spurs were sold their best player it has taken them a bit of time to move on and improve and we sold bale you know there was that you know they had that couple of seasons where we were in no man's land before poch got it together when yep. we sold barbatov and keen we had two points from eight games when we sold modric we were we went from being in the top four to dropping out of it so I think generally it does take us a bit of time to kind of get over it. Hopefully under Ange will take us less time this, this time round. In terms of money, you know, that it, in terms of the money that we're getting for Kane, are you hopeful we'll spend it right and effectively? Uh, you know, there's talks of gift or ban, uh, new striker. Is that how you is that the direction you'd go in? So, so I, I would, but what I've said, there's a few things, Simon, you've got to look at. Some of them have said um, that, uh, the, I can't remember where it was, but the tweet made it look like it sounded like we're already spending the money. Not we're about to spend. We've already, so, it, you know, and then I there's other journalists saying, Exactly. Then there's other journalists saying the money's in now, then they ask for cash up front so they can start dealing with things. You would hope if they said that, we knew this for a while, and you would hope with all this delaying and knowing this was going to happen, that the deals are there. They were just waiting for this to be official, and then they go, right, after Sunday's game, here you go, here you go, here you go, for, for whoever it may be. As you know, Simeon, I, I, I wax lyrical. I mean, if we put it this way, if we go get Eze, let's just say, and a centre-back of a, a reputable standard, then you can say, do you know what? The 100 million, we, we did invest it back in the club. We did do what we should have done. If we don't, then there's then I think there's going to be a big problem in the stadiums this season. The, pro- the problem we're running into is the current market. As much as 100 million sounds like a lot, you've got Rasmus Hoyland who played, who scored nine goals in Serie A last season, going for 70 million. That's the you've got Moises Caicedo yep. going for 100 million. That's yep. the market we're in. So as much yep. as 100 million is a lot for a player with one year left of his contract. When you're trying to sign people to, you know, effectively replace Kane and make up for that, it doesn't get you that much. And it definitely doesn't get you anything that's going to get you near the quality of Harry Kane. Um, you know, if you're talking about Eze, in my opinion, I think if Palace sell Eze, they're going to get relegated. So I think they're going to, I think they're, I think they're going to put the prices right up, especially having lost Zaha and potentially Olise yeah. as well. So I think that's a, that's pretty much most of the Kane money gone in that deal if we do it. Tab Sober, they're talking about a £60 million price tag on him now. Price has gone up apparently. That's, that's pretty much 50% of the Kane money gone. So when you're talking about spending the Kane money, like we, we, we shouldn't even see it as like the Kane money. We should have to spend the money, whatever we have. That's required to improve the needs of the squad, and and I don't we I don't from my, in my opinion we we shouldn't have to have sold Kane to spend money. That should just be Correct. a bonus. Um, Correct, and hopefully we'll sell Hoybier. Hopefully we'll sell a few others and get a bit of money more, more money out the door, and we can. I think it's more important just to lessen the numbers in the squad anyway. But yeah, you're right. In terms of selling players and getting actual figures, but in terms of like in my opinion, I don't expect any. Big transfer, not, not, and when I say big transfers, like a thirty million deal isn't so big in in this current market. So I expect something like that. I don't expect Tottenham to go, you know, splash out fifty, sixty, seventy million on a player because of this deal. I really don't. I think we're still gonna be going for deals in around the twenty-five, thirty million mark, pound mark. Well, you look at it, Simeon. We've missed out on Alex Scott, 
it would have been the perfect buy, good good uh, price range that we were involved in or could have got involved in with 20. You look at Orban, um, he's a, he is a wonderful potential, uh, potentially a, an incredible player. Love what I've seen of him so far. Apparently that, they've added 10 million to the price tag for Orban. Well, of course they have. Now that's either because he's got a hat trick recently or because t- they know Spurs are involved and all of a sudden they've got 86 million or roughly that in, in cash to burn. Um, this is sometimes what happens when we play our silly buggers and try and draw these uh, negotiations out or interest or whatever long. The, the longer you leave it and try and haggle it down, you've come into a lot of money or this player go scores a hat trick then the the price goes up. It's like you said, this is the transfer market we're in. And uh, he thinks he's the master manipulator and he can get everything he wants. He he can't. If he was smart, he would have signed all ban. He would have got these deals done before if he knew yep. it was coming. Yeah, I think if he was smart, he would have got it all done before, like he did with Bale. I know the deals itself weren't great, but he was smart to pretty much sign all the players before agreeing the uh, agreeing to sell bail to yep. Madrid right at the end of the window. That was a smart thing to do because it meant it got all the best prices and there was even rumours that Bale would stay alongside these signings, even though it was obviously rubbish. But he put the feelings out there just to make sure that clubs weren't fleecing him. But now it's going to be a lot more difficult having sold Kane um, at this stage. But look, Brian, I appreciate your time, mate. It's a very, very difficult day with... Uh, yep. Harry Kane officially becoming a Bayern Munich player. I look, I do wish him all the best, and I, and I think he deserves the best. Right. And hopefully, he you know wins loads of trophies. But I just think when it comes to being a Tottenham fan, it's a sad bit of like indictment of the club the fact that Harry Kane himself has officially decided to join Bayern, and it's never going to be a happy day. As much as you can say, it's, oh, it's a great deal and hundred million, it's, I'm never going to be happy about this transfer, and, and that's that. Yep, uh, you're looking at it, mate. Uh, just to say, like I said, the, the ticket price has gone up. We're out of Europe and now we've just sold our most elite player. But Brian, before we leave, can you let people know what's going on on Tottenham on Tour? Yes, we've got a live show coming on at 2pm today where Ben Kaufman is joined for a few people and they're actually going to do a bit of a pick-me-up. There's going to be Harry Kane appreciation and a load of Ange love. A load of Ange love. And uh, we've got a guy called Ian Meth who was who lives in Glasgow, big Celtic fan and Spurs fan. And obviously he's got a lot of love for Ange and he's going to dive into what he did at Celtic and everything. So if you want a bit of a pick-me-up, go to Tottenham on tour at 2pm. All right, so go check that out. Thank you, Brian, for joining me today Always. for this Tottenham update. We'll see you all very, very shortly. Let's hope for some signings by the next time we see each other. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, come you Spurs. On, you Spurs.